Okay guys, so today I'm going to be doing a video on the appropriate heating and lighting for your corn snake. So let's get straight into the video. So we'll start off with heating. What you want to do with basically all reptiles, but just in this case anyway, you want to have a hot end of the enclosure and a cool end. This will create a sort of temperature gradient as you go from hot to cool and that will allow the corn snake to choose its optimum temperature. So like in the wild, it could go away into the cool and just chill out a bit and then it could move off into the heat so that on average its body temperature will be exactly what it wants to be. So over on the right side here, you can see I've got my heating element there. And then over on the cool end, I've got absolutely nothing. So the temperature goes down over here and my corn snake can choose what temperature he wants to sit at. Now over on the cool end, I allow the temperature to reach about 20 degrees Celsius or room temperature pretty much, which is virtually 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And then over on the hot end, you want it to reach about 30 degrees Celsius or roughly 90 degrees Fahrenheit. To provide this heat, there are basically four ways that you can do this. The first is to use a heat mat, which is a little black pad that gives off heat. Now, I wouldn't particularly recommend these because, I mean, I'll have to talk about it another time because there are lots of cons with them. But if you do use them, make sure you use them in a way that they're like through glass or through um, a plastic tub made for reptiles. So then that the animal can't actually come into contact with them because there are the risk of burns. But if you use these, you want to put them on a on off thermostat. I'll talk about thermostats more in detail in a minute. Uh, the other way of heating them is to use a ceramic heat emitter, which is what you're looking at now. If you have one of these for a four foot vivarium, which is big enough for an adult corn snake, then you're going to want about a 100 or 150 watt ceramic heat emitter and you want to control this on a pulse proportional thermostat. The Another way of heating corn snakes is with infrared bulbs, which are these red bulbs, which I wouldn't really recommend because they do give off a light and even though it's not that bright, it is going to bother them if it's on at night a little bit. So I wouldn't really recommend them, but if you do use one, then you want to use that on a dimming thermostat. But there is actually a new type of infrared bulb that was recently released by Arcadia called the DP projector. And this is probably going to be your optimal heat element. I mean, I've not got any experience with them, but there is a review by Pete Hawkins, who's a great guy for reptiles in the UK. So I'll leave a link to that review in the description. But if you're going to use one of those, you also want to use that, like the other infrared bulbs, on a dimming thermostat. So the long and short about thermostats is that basically they're a little device that controls the heat given off by the heat element. This is my Leopard Gecko's Pulse Proportional Thermostat, but I've got the same thing for me corn snake. And basically, um, it's just like this little box. And as you can see, sensor heater mains. You just plug it in via that. Then you plug the heater into, well, the heater section. And the sensor goes inside the vivarium in a little probe, which I'll just show you. You can see that that is the probe for the thermostat inside my Leopard Gecko's vivarium. Same thing for the corn snake. So basically this will read the temperature and then the little dial that you saw, I'll show you it again. That little red dial at the top there, that you can adjust it like this to change the temperature you want. Mine's set to just above 30, which is about the same for the corn snake to be honest. But basically that probe will read that temperature and with a pulse proportional stat, it'll turn off the device on and off constantly, which will allow it to maintain that temperature. Dimming thermostats are a bit different. What they do is they stop the full amount of power going to the bulb, which is why you need to use them with anything with a filament or that gives off light so that the filament isn't warming up and warming down, which will cause it to burn through relatively quickly. And the standard on off thermostat for um, heat mats, they are like the pulse proportional thermostat, only they have a wider range. So see as this is going 
on and off virtually constantly with a on off thermostat it'll stay on for maybe 10 minutes then turn off for 10 minutes so they're not quite as good as pulse proportional thermostats but that is a basic overview to thermostats and where you should use them now when it comes to lighting for corn snakes lighting is not 100 percent necessary but i've said this before in another video that you'll see in a little card in the top right right about now that uvb lighting is extremely beneficial so i would definitely recommend it it's not 100 percent necessary though so if for some spectacular reason you absolutely cannot have lighting whatsoever then okay don't get it but i would really recommend it now if you do if you're using a vivarium like me that's not got a mesh top and you're going to be putting the lights inside of it then you want a 2% output or 2.0 UVB bulb that covers the majority of the vivarium but you do want the cool end to go into darkness. Now this allows the temperature gradient and photo gradient which basically means light gradient to match up with each other so that like the sun there's sort of heat and light being outputted at the same sort of rate which again allows more natural regulation of the animal's internal environment but if you do have a mesh topped vivarium then you're going to want to use a greater output UVB bulb say a 5% output or 7% output depending on the brand and also if your vivariums of a spectacular dimension say most vivariums are about a foot to two feet tall for corn snakes so if it's like that then these measurements will do you fine but if it's any taller you will have to get a stronger bulb it is essential that you do provide your corn snake and any other reptile with a nighttime period which is when the lights go off so basically you can have roughly a 12 hour light period and then a 12 hour off period mine's slightly different to that but it's best to get a little mechanical timer they're only about five quid or maybe a tenner in some places where they're a bit dearer like but you can get them and then they will turn these on and off for you so you don't have to worry about doing it yourself so yeah guys that roughly sums up heating and lighting for your corn snake in the most basic way i could do it it is a very deep topic and there are lots of reasons for doing things and I do want to take my time to make sure that you understand this because when I was getting into keeping reptiles a lot of the terminology is hard to understand and trying to get it through understanding is easier once you just know the basics of what you actually need. So I do hope the way I filmed this video has helped you understand this a bit better if you're just getting into it or it's gave you some more information to check that what you have is the correct stuff. So I hope you did enjoy this video and if you did, please leave a like and do consider subscribing for similar content and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys!